Tom here from Lawrence Systems. I'm joined by my bearded friends for an uber big incident. <laughs> yeah. See what you yeah. did there. Right. I saw it. We absolutely <laughs> do not uh, are not laughing because we know yeah. because we know a lot of these people have some really hard times ahead of them uh, and things like that. But we want to try and keep things at least somewhat lighthearted. We we've been there. We know what it's like to do some incident response. We've been there in things that suck when we have to deal with it. Uh, we feel bad for them. Uh, so we're not here to make fun. We're here to do some lessons learned. But I want to start with a few caveats. Context and caveats is we don't really know if this truly is an external threat actor pretending to be an outsider because, you know, cue the ubiquity incident. We don't want another yeah. thing like that. So we're speculating here based on what we know. We do know Uber has confirmed they had an incident. So they've addressed it. And there's some external changes that were made to accounts like at their hacker one. So, yeah, someone in there was goofing around. Whether that person's external or internal, uh, we're assuming it's external for now, but we're not making any hard statements there. Um, and also a quick reminder, we don't know how much of this may or may not be made up. This was an interesting side note to the lapsus incident, because when you have a bunch of kids doing it for the lulls and they breach something small to make it seem bigger, they may, you know, doctor some photos. But we have a few things that we think, wow, they I don't think these are doctored. But uh, nonetheless, we'll just throw that out there as a caveat. But our goal here is ultimately talk about what we know based on all the external knowledge. And boy, is it just pouring out over Twitter right now. Uh, we know a lot of people are waking up to a really bad day right now over there. Yeah. And um, we want to talk about some lesson learned because if any of these things are true, whether it's true or not, maybe you have a password in a PowerShell thing. We're hoping to remind you, you shouldn't have a password yeah. in a PowerShell thing. We'll talk about like some lessons learned of things you could do better uh, based on if any of this is true. All right. I just want to share that screenshot because immediate, I didn't see this when I first noticed it, but I think Jason noticed it right away. Uh, it's going to be kind of small to read on the screen here, but there's basically the downloading of log IDs, the downloading of a few things they were trying to upload, downloading putty. Like, you didn't yeah. have putty already? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no, those were downloads of what would probably be malware Power, or like yeah. uh, you know something like uh lsas mm -hmm. dump capabilities or carb roasting capabilities something off the shelf and you can see failed download failed download because of defender and then plop it into an s1 console where in the top right it says ir team which if you think about that and put that in context insider threat or compromised asset you have this massive you know live compromised problem when a member of your ir team gets popped right like oh, that is yeah. that, that could be very implicitous so yeah um, but yeah and a lot of this started uh with them taking over their slack that was among the first things because uh, uh there's a lot more screenshots that i'll leave links to vx underground just dumping these all on twitter right now so they'll be linked down and below but they also trolled some of the employees the employees thought it was a joke so these yeah. they're going yeah. back and forth with reactors popping into channels yeah. and in there at everyone and making comments uh so they played along with it and they're like log out and they're like but this is someone fun we can talk to. In our, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. This is, uh, I mean, a lesson to be learned there is, right, like you really, so, so many people I think are going to try to run their IR in their Slack. Assume it's, assume it's compromised. Spin yeah. up a signal group, right? Uh, spin signal up something uh, out of band. It looks like, based on some of the other screenshots I saw, Uber did at least have a way to notify employees to stay out of Slack. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah. it's like telling if you tell people not to press a button, they're going to press the button. So I'm sure there are more employees in Slack than ever. But that's a good call, man. Like we had an out of band comms methodology that was established from some of our systems, but not our core systems. And they were separable from the identity plane. Uh, right. And so it was kind of have you have, you know, if I ask this one question of any USP or anybody watching, you know, do you have a incident response plan? that includes out of band contact for all of your customers and out of band contact methodologies for your structured internal teams to communicate on in a major event. Yeah. Um, and this is why I like signal, out. even, you know, how I actually, we started our conversation on signal. For sure. And if I yeah. see any of your numbers change, I'm going to really verbally talk to you and figure out why did yep. your uh, security information change on signal. Um, yep. It's also the way is I had an employee, um, someone spearfished my new guy and said, Hey, it's Tom. I got a new number. And he was like, did you get a new number, Tom? I was like standing. I'm like, no. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but I, he, the person wasn't even on signal. So he's like, and that's how we message. So, uh, yeah. you know, having those solid things that aren't easily compromised, such as an AD or a Slack or something like that, where you can start impersonating. Because you think if they have a mass notification system, the threat actor could have also used that to send 100%. a mass notification. Like, please interact yeah. with this person, you know, do the opposite or whatever. So yeah, it's yeah. hard to know what's true uh, in the middle of an incident. Right. Yeah, and the other thing, the nice thing about Signal that people don't think about is the disappearing messages feature is pretty key for things you don't necessarily want to be discoverable. 
Yes. Well, yes. I kind of just do that by default. I, I find it just a good practice. I don't need to read something from two weeks ago. Yep. Uh, and if anything ever sensitive was sent, it would have at least some degree of uh, impermanence, right? Yeah. Um, but but I wanted to jump back to kind of what we think has happened and maybe talk through some lessons learned Yes. Uh, on that. And so, you know, we think there was an SE or, or social engineering attack of some sort, right? Yep. At least that's what the kid claimed. Uh, yeah. If it is the kid, right? This maybe, maybe, maybe not threat actor. To get then VPN access, and then essentially was able to just enumerate SMB shares as that user, which now may potentially have been that IR lead or team member. Um, and then this is the other piece, which Tom, I know you had some um, takeaways for, which is they found a script that had a password for yep. for what? <laughs> Everything. Was it the Thiatic server? I believe it was allowed them yeah. to get into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a password so, uh, access management solution, a PAM solution. Yeah. Is there some sort of automation they're trying to do against it, or are they reusing service creds? Or like, you know, I have so many questions around oh, this. If there's an AD backend, did they yeah. do Kerberosting? Are they owning that AD domain that now has extensibility into the different cloud identity platforms? Are they consuming cloud identity first, or are they the source mm -hmm. of truth for that cloud? Id like, it's it's it's. There's yeah. so many questions in that space, yep. but. Yeah, and that's where I'm going to throw this up here. Um, they've been interacting. Well, they allegedly have been interacting different security people uh, and reporters because they start chatting with them. And uh, this was actually, you know, yeah. it, they're very responsive. Like, this is how I did it, which almost makes me think it's an individual. They just pivoted their way through all this uh, based on what we know. And they basically, yeah, found this network share. Uh, one of the PowerShell scripts has a username and password for the admin of the uh, Thiatic PAM solution. Using this, I was able to extract secrets for all services, Duo, yeah. One Login, AWS, G Suite, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, an Uber IP range, and, like GCP, AWS. Yep. And this and chat Uber feels internet. legit, right? Yep. Because the, the shorthand used, the SE dash, 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 there wasn't a lot of elaboration. It was very poignant to the point of exactly what it meant. I mean, it was, to me, felt like... Um, Somebody really just claiming their work. Um, I yeah. could be wrong, but it's uh, not embellished enough to feel like a lie. Right? No, right. It's just yeah. simple. Here's what I did: SE VPN pivot SMB shares, uh, and then you know, voila, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, not to make light of the situation, but but just magic, and that's one of the things you have to think about. Those and here's here's what I don't know for sure. One, um, you know, password rotation could have helped fix this because maybe this PowerShell script was from a long time ago that some other person, I don't know how to solve the problem, but I know how to solve it now. And there's nothing more permanent than a temporary but, solution of but this is how would, our show script works. Here's what I'd say though. Yeah. I believe that if you think about any of this type of break glass type structured accounts that should be used once and then literally burned, right? One time pad is said for a reason, right? It's meant to be literally once and then we're done. Yeah. And so when we had our break glass policy, I had a physical drive that held key pass databases that each of those passwords were distributed to a third person and the password for the BitLocker encrypted drive was done. And so you think of that, and when we had it, we burned a password, there was a four person process to ensure that they actually burned that password, that any use of it then had extensibility auditing yep. before you check in, check out process. Like, I'm just saying, if I was an MSP at just under X revenue, I won't even say right now, I don't like to broadcast that, but you know, that had a three person security team and could do those things. I just feel like there's some hygienic things that could be better for this not to exist or be valuable. Yeah. But uh, don't absolutely. underestimate the fact that Uber was built as like a startup using the DevOpsy startup culture, right? Which yeah, is yeah. No, no, a lot I've of times not security first at all, right? It's like yeah. minimal viable product, we'll pivot from there, right? This could be part of some MVP that as Tom pointed out, you know, these temporary solutions, the problem last solved, for a few so years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Moving back to the, yeah, they're moving on to the next problem. So, yeah. uh, I mean, they're not, uh, while they've grown, uh, I would likely guess that their internal infrastructure looks a lot more like a startup than an enterprise. Yeah. yeah. They're still on that pivot Pitch. fast, break fast, yeah. move fast. Um, and they're from 2009. I mean, they're, they're a massive company, yep. so they should have kind of, um, but you know, that's where you put the priorities. Uh, so now that we know everything that did happen, uh, next thing is what could have been better? What could, what some lesson learned on there? <laughs> Based on what we like, speculatively I mean, know. <laughs> we might have some, again, uh, you know, the Cisco owner talking about, sounds like it might have some MFA fatigue there, right? I mean, somebody just yeah. pushing until you hit approve. Uh, yeah, they, I, if we know they're using Duo, so probably they're yeah. using Duo for that. So it actually makes me think it's exactly like what happened in the Cisco. Cisco. Yeah. Um, if you're using Duo, there's your MFA push, and enough push notifications come through, you're like, I, shut this thing up, boing, 
<laughs> but that's, that's why I'll take it back to an AAD centrism or octocentrism with tongue in cheek. But this this conversation around FIDO tokens as an enforcement through CA is coming where we can do that now in a more granular fashion. But just using things like strong authentication, even if you are doing authentication through push, make sure it asks me to type in a number that I yeah. cannot know unless being yeah. also additionally yeah. socially engineered. And so that's my first takeaway. And the other thing I'll run through real quick because I know we you know, don't want to go too long on this. I think I like to map things like this back to controls. So as we go through some of these, yeah. I'd love to try to take a poke at yes. what controls on CIS this kind of maps to. So um, we already talked about the break glass handling, control five and the improvements inside of control five, really spe specify how you should increase your knowledge around handling these things. Now, back to Jason's point, I'm not gonna beat him up for this because I think having a healthy break glass account takes some yeah. internal discipline and leadership from, uh, you know, people uh, inside. So anything else we could do, gents? Uh, don't store passwords in PowerShell accounts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. I mean, just, yep. That's also control five. So we can call that, call that the same, uh, it's the same kitten, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Role based access control and keeping that really locked down and restricted. Yeah. That's just, this is something I had a conversation. We were, uh, me and Jason were just at DattoCon and, you know, I was talking to one of the vendors that we have no in respect and they were talking about how inconvenient it is, but it's just life. Like there's not any thought to change it. Uh, we were talking about updating a billing system. He goes, I do all the dev, but I don't, I'm not even access to it only when it's needed. And that's why it took us this long to solve this billing problem. And he goes, and then we, I'm already reduced out of it. We just kind of, were just talking security yeah. um, internally because obviously the lazy thing is leaving this particular person who does a lot yeah. of their backend DevOps with it, but he goes, I don't need access to any of that. He goes, I haven't even yeah. logged in and looked at it in yeah, separation. Goes, by I role. don't even have a reason to. <laughs> if you look here, both the Sent01 screenshot and the AWS screenshot seem to be this Phil Lee account. Yeah. Right. So this guy's an IR team member that seems to have, I mean, it makes sense he has access to the Sent01 account. Yeah, of though. course. Maybe, but I'd, he might just, I would argue that maybe he just needs access to logs. And if he needs further access, he could get it granted later. Yep. He also seems to have pretty high levels of access inside of the AWS account, too. And I, it seems to me like they're not locking down this guy's account to the well, level that he could be. 100%. That brings in, and one of these challenges, I think, is that CIS controls are meant to be iterative, right? Uh, it's one of my favorite set of controls. But if you think about it, it shows some maturity when you can do combos, just like playing pool. I can shoot the corner pocket and wobble it in a little bit. But if I need two angles bounced, it's going to be a little more challenging, right? Yep. Like that's kind of the point. And so when you think about this, this takes a control combo six, uh, for secure network design, or six for authorization management, 12 secure network design, right? And 13 um, for network monitoring defense. Like you have to combine all three of those to be able to do exactly what Tom and was talking about as the initial intro to this of, let's lock down network access, lateralization, what should we have access to? Let's talk about RPAC, let's talk about implementing these things that go to even network lateralization. Like, should I be able to do this? Should I be able to do these things? Now the challenge I think you find is if it is that our team member the answer to a lot of those questions probably is yes, but maybe not as his daily driver, maybe yeah. as an admin account that he only uses for those privileged access. And so I think one of the things I'd harken back to is you see very plainly, this is the actual name of this human, yeah. so it's not quite likely that it's his admin account. Yep. And I think that's a big takeaway is separating admin roles yeah, and functions. Separate accounts for accounts. admin yeah. access, 100% for sure all the time. Yeah, those are just those little things you don't think about is making sure everyone has it and not password reusing those out of yeah. convenience. So yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't mean to not speak about that, yeah. but hundo P on that one, Tom. <laughs> do, do, do we want to talk about Thycotic a bit here, right? Because it seems like there's some caveats with that particular piece of software. Yes, or, yes. Jason has something to say on this. <laughs> oh, I mean, I have a lot of things to say about a lot of things. I mean, looking through the uh, Reddit post, uh, which I'm sure you'll link below. Yep. Uh, it talks about how they basically were able to enumerate all the passwords inside of Thycotic, right? And it looks to me, based on looking at the products page for Thycotic, the ability to do analytics around password misuse or bulk password mm -hmm. stuff, analytics is a paid add-on. Yeah, so, security is an upsell with them. Yeah, and that's, yeah. <laughs> that's unfortunate a lot of vendors, they don't, they, they try to lure you in with a low price, then they have yep. all these add-ons. Oh, you want the product to be secure? Oh, well, that's, oh, that's extra. extra. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I very much feel very strongly that if you're selling a product that you store secrets in, the ability to determine people are misusing those secrets is a core feature, not a paid add-on. Right. 
I, you know, and we don't know sure. that Uber didn't buy the paid add-on, but we just yeah. think it shouldn't be a paid add-on. Insert name of any uh, event. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So we're misconstrued on that. So I think I think if you look at that, in my opinion, that really hammers on some of the control six, right? On improvements on authorization uh, kind of conversations, right? But um, the other piece that I think I don't want to miss on this either is really just that training piece. I mean, we've brought yes. up five or six or seven tips that we all think might be improvements as a result of what we're thought has been thought through, but like that's part of training people, right? Yeah. That should be 14.2. You train your workforce members to recognize SE attacks, right? Like we're talking about here. 14.3, train the workforce members on authentication best practices, like staying up to date on, on modern protocols and using FIDO by policy, using FIDO as an extensibility for more secure things, having an admin key and a non-admin key. And those two have separate identity structures. And like this kind of thought process takes training, right? I know it because I learn it and I try to learn it. And I'm always still wrong yeah. because it moves too quick. But yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people could do better with their training and not just think of it as, but I did the automated no before thing, or I did the whatever yeah. it may be. Yeah. It's teach them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, teach people. I think Duo, if they were using Duo, I think Duo is smart enough that when you deny it enough, it like locks essentially. You can set a lockout timing. Yeah, yeah for sure. sure. And a clipping level. We should teach people to not like don't hit accept so it goes away. Just keep hitting deny. If you hit deny five times, then it's gonna lock the account out and somebody's gonna have to fix Stage it. Stage advice. Yeah. 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 Also uh, kind of final wrapping things like when they change stuff, uh, the intent of the threat actor, I think is just to make a lot of noise because why would you, you're not ransomware, you're not posting anything about money. There's not a single Bitcoin mentioned in here. Sure. Um, they changed your, you know, hacker one. Uber has been hacked, uh, has been hacker and this hacker one account has been also I wonder um, if the poster is Philly. Oh, that's funny, but not all that untrue, potentially. I won't throw that yeah. shade, but I will say, you know, this does feel like me 20 years ago, yeah. right? If I had access to those oh, yeah. capabilities and the ability to, to flex my, my chest muscles about it, yep. and I was 18, I promise you 18-year-old Matt Lee would have done that. And so I, I feel, and maybe I'll be wrong, I, I feel like this is at, that kid just yeah. genuinely genuinely and and you know it might play out in fact i'll take a speculation on this the department of justice what three four months ago basically said they decline to uh to prosecute people that are good trust hackers um and you might find yeah. this could be an argument and their attorney uses and if you do i want 10 percent. Well, but you yeah. know yeah <laughs> Well, the question is, if he doesn't really release anything other than these screenshots, then he's not really, other than being a pain in the ass for them, he's not really <laughs> causing that much harm, right? Like you, right, if yeah. you don't see, uh, if you don't see all what two petabytes or however many yeah, petabytes, one point one seven yeah, terabytes was just pictures. Like it was yeah, like, if, man, good God. If, if we don't but, see yeah. that release, then you know this very easily could be the case where this guy breached got really loud about it because they clearly weren't paying attention to him uh and may just be okay i don't know we'll see Process this could be interesting. Weird. but that's kind of all we know now if more goes follow it on twitter follow that reddit post yeah. is good so we'll i'll leave a lot of links this is something that you know we spent some time reading this morning wanted to talk about a few lessons learned and speculate on yeah. it we feel bad for the instant responders because even if they're not dumping data and hurting people they Maybe. still have to clean it all up oh, yeah. so Nobody's yeah. getting a day off for quite a while now. <laughs> and I really hope my ask Uber RCA give us a good document on what actually happened here. Yeah, yes. like uh, uh, as yeah. we all learn from it. Well, yeah. you triggered me on this, Jason, because when you know what were you asking earlier before the show, Tom, and we'll wrap up after that. Is you, know, you said, listen, what what could people do about like the transparency of this? Like, well, if we say that this didn't really happen, people will say we're lying. And my answer is. You, you just need to be humble and transparent. Yeah. The more and more humility and transparency around this, and the more we become accepting of at least trying to learn from those mistakes and correct and be better, then I feel like we'll have better chances of succeeding in the future yeah. than if we keep stigmatizing a lot of this yeah. and, uh, and those things. So uh, yeah, hopefully yeah. it's taken in the intent to learn and to push forward as most, a community. Most of my learning is by doing something dumb and realizing I shouldn't do that again. So yep. uh, if I can learn from other people's dumbs, then man, that's way better than doing it myself. Absolutely. Yeah. That's definitely the way to learn. Maybe this is an era we're coming back to because I keep, like you said, that the script kitties in the early 2000s and yeah. what we were like when we were younger, <laughs> like, I mean, I was never malicious. If I got into something, I was messing with your printer, hands down. That was, yeah. I was, that was my go to. Uh, 
I think it was a you, Jason, who, who changed the printer setting a long time ago, at, allegedly someplace to say insert coin. Yeah, insert coin <laughs> or uh, radiation leak. Yeah, that radiation leak. Or, or just set the printer because there was a PCL code where you could just set the, the text on the display. We had one yeah, of them. Yeah. It always said PC load letter, even if it had paper <laughs> in it. <laughs> I think insert coins my favorite, but radiation yeah. leak and PC low letter are good. <laughs> PC low letter just has a special special place in my heart for yeah. the uh, you know aforementioned movie yeah. before. Okay. That's how we learned. That's how we got to where we are. Uh, not being malicious, we always wanted to learn a lesson or occasionally show someone a lesson. But uh, lots of lessons to be learned. Uh, it will be an update on this. We'll all get together and do it. Um, we also are going to do some uh, more about from how I would hack you to how you would defend against us type things. So look for us in the future. Like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks.